thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Azalea Gue. Uh, she was an undergrad research intern with us this summer working on uh, music quality estimation. Uh, she's a student from the University of Toronto and with that, please take it away. Okay. Um, today I'm going to present on my re um, intern project on improving French A audio distance for generative music evaluation. Here's our agenda for this presentation. I'll first go through the introduction on the existing research, and I'll talk about the um, options that we explore to improve French audio distance. So first, our project goal. Our primary project goal is to improve the objective evaluation of generative music. This is important because existing objective evaluation methods poorly reflect human perception. Current existing methods include, first, um, most researchers conduct listening tests. Um, they ask real humans to listen to both the music generated by their models and the music composed by human composers. They, they either ask them to rate musical quality on a five-point scale, use Pyrus voting to vote which one is better, or use a Turing test, asking them if they think this audio is composed by human or generated by machine. However, listening tests are time consuming and it costs a lot of money. So this is only suitable as the last, last step of model development. Moreover, some conditional models use reconstruction similarity. Um, they compare between the reconstructed signal from the original. For example, um, if you have a model that is conditioned on audio, you can compare the, um, the generated audio from the um, last segments of the original audio clip. They compare things like audio labels, embedding, melody, pitch class, grooving, and etc. However, this method also have a problem. Being um, being departed, uh, departed from original doesn't mean the resulting audio is not good. For example, you can have a really good sounding music that is different from the original music. This leads us to our last and most commonly used metric, which is French audio distance. <coughs> These metrics compare um, the evaluation set with a set of studio quality reference sets. Um, it does that by comparing the distance in embedding distributions. And this metric is commonly used in generative music studies. However, the problem with this include that um, it is not standardized. There are no consensus on which embedding um, is most effective at um, evaluating generative music. And, and it also has a sample size bias, so larger sample size receive higher scores. And there's also like different baselines that could be used with this method, and some of them are not very good. For example, music caps, which we'll show later. So our main focus will be to improve French audio distance. Here are our explored options. We used and evaluated different embeddings. We propose better baselines other than music caps. And we use the FAD infinity um, method to eliminate the sample size bias. We'll start with the different embeddings. So what is an embedding? An embedding is a vectorizer. It is a latent understanding that captures high-level features more meaningful than the ups and downs of a waveform, for example. And um, different training goals, training data, parameter all affect what features are captured. For example, um, the, the audio text join embedding takes either audio or text as an input and maps them to a joint embedding space. Whereas a low rate compression embedding takes audio only data as an input and map it to a lower bit rate um, data format. Oops. Oops. Um, 
the differences in training goals might indicate that, for example, in Codec, which is a low-rate compression model, might capture acoustic details better than VGGH, which is a classifier, which, which is like trained to ignore distortions. <coughs> so um, here are selected embeddings that we are going to evaluate. We basically selected one from each category. And um, here are their parameters. The contact length determines how much audio can a model see at each frame. For example, with a short window like one second, um, I doubt any model or even musical professionals can um, can assess like musical aspects, like um, the repetitiveness of a rhythm. <coughs> but this would be possible with longer windows, such as the ten seconds for a clap or the five second window for mert. So, with this many embeddings, how do we compare between them? First, we have the Gaussian assumption test. French audio distance assumes that the embeddings are a multivariate Gaussian because um, they use a closed form formula that is optimized but only taking mean and covariance matrices for inputs. <coughs> so, we, we use the D'Augustino's case square test to assess the Gaussianness of each model. Here are the results. The, per the percentage value represents the percent of features in each embedding pa that passes the Gaussian test. As you can see, there are many embeddings that doesn't, uh, that has like a large percentage of um, features that doesn't pass the Gaussian test. However, I think statistical methods like the FAD are lenient on the Gaussian assumption. So lower score doesn't mean that they can, cannot be used for FAD, but that they might have like higher variances for different random subsets of the same data set. Next up, we have the indi individual score test. So friendship distance assumes that high or low probability samples are indeed good or bad. Um, to test this assumption, one study in the visual field proposed that um, proposed to gather and compare like these um, low probability samples. So what they did is they gathered um, a set of low probability samples determined by one embedding and by another embedding, and they compare them side by side. This is very intuitive for image, but we can't just compare audio side by side. Um, so we, what, we, what we did is that um, we take advantage of music app captions that mentions quality, and we extracted quality labels from captions using GPT-4. Um, we extracted two aspects of quality separately, musical and acoustic. A high musical quality would indicate that the, the music is beautifully performed, meaningfully composed and structured, whereas a high acoustic quality would indicate that the music is clean, studio grade, with no un unintended noise or artifacts. <coughs> Here are the data set statistics. As you can see, there's an imbalance of classes. For example, 42 of the songs have scored like high musicality, but only 9% are, uh, are marked with low musicality. Similarly, 39% of songs are marked with low acoustic quality, whereas only 1% is marked with high acoustic quality. To resolve this, um, we use binary labels instead. Instead of comparing high with medium and low, we compare high with non-high versus, um, and similarly for acoustic, we compare low versus non-low. <coughs> Using these labels, we computed individual FAD scores on the entire music apps data set for each embedding. Um, and then we compare um, the we collect the best and worst 200 songs for each embedding from the music apps data set. And we compare them with the music app labels. So we, we, see, we, we get a percentage of um, how, many of them, how many of the best songs are actually labeled good versus how many um, 
bad songs are actually labeled um, low quality. So here are the results. Clap and Mertz achieved um, the best scores for musical quality, and Encodec achieved the best scores for acoustic quality. And for the original and most commonly used VGGH, well, its score is very close to random. So, um, and the, the acoustic quality score is not that much better either. So using any of these embeddings would be a great improvement over using VGGH. <coughs> After we gather the worst songs identified by each model, we can actually listen to some of them to better understand what they capture. For encodec, this is yeah. Most of the songs identified by Encodec are similar to this, where like, there's a lot of arti um, acoustic distortions, even though um, the music might not be bad without the acoustic distortions. And for Mert, the best sam samples sound like this. So these are very musically uninteresting, and they're, they're typically very like monotonous, either one tone played over and over again, or like um, a simple um, wave. <coughs> and for VGGH, this is one of the best samples. It actually sounds, sounds quite, quite good. good. So, so after more investigation, investigation, we found that, that the, VGG, um, the best samples that VGGH pick up is actually unpopular classes. So they are not actually bad, but they are unpopular gen genres that are not in the reference data set. I mean, it's a classifier model. What do you expect? <laughs> um, here are the samples. Here are the best samples picked up by CLAP. This sounds like a coin toss. And this might be like an instrument lesson or something. So um, for clap, we found that the best samples are typically non-music, and they include like um, they might be associated with like text for maybe coin toss, maybe instrument lesson, maybe like bird singing, um, which are not common in the reference data set. Overall, listening to these samples help us better understand the mod like the features that the models capture. After hearing these samples, you might be wondering, what are those? Why are these bad samples in the data set? As we already know, music cap is 40% low quality. However, since FAD is comparison based, um, that means that a higher, um, to, to make a higher score meaningful, the reference data set needs to be good. Using the music cap data set as a reference, higher score, a higher score would mean that um, the audio is closer to the um, music app reference. However, if music app is low quality, then the score doesn't mean that your the songs that you're evaluating is good quality. So we propose um, two new baseline data sets. One is FMA Pop, and another is Muse All. FMA Pop is created from the Free Music Archive by collecting the 30 most popular songs from each genre. Whereas Muse All is created by combi combining the 150 songs from MuseDB plus the 190 songs from MuseDB. The difference between them is that 
FMA Pop focused on diverse, diversity between genres, whereas Musal is slightly better in terms of quality. We use these new baselines in all the FAD evaluations in this study. Back to embedding comparison. I also applied um, artificial dif um, distortions, like the ones used in the original FAD paper. So um, different levels of distortions can measure sensitivity of each embedding for the different acoustic differences they introduce. We applied distortion, low pass, reverb, pitch up and pitch down for the different um, for the different samples in the music caps data set to evaluate the embedding's responses to these changes. And under distortion, you mean clipping or nonlinear function of light? Um, pardon? Yeah, it's, it's, it was the pedal board, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here are the results. Um, we graphed the change in fresh audio distance versus um, the level of dis distortion we applied. So the x-axis is the level of distortion and the y-axis is the change of FAD from the original FAD without anything applied. Um, as you can see, in codec, the line in um, brown or purple is the most um, sensitive to these um, acoustic changes. Whereas other, other models are not um, as affected as much. This confirmed our previous results that Encodec is very sensitive to acoustic quality. Question. Yes? Reverb, so higher is worse, right? In this in the y-axis metric? Yeah. Uh, yes. So high. If for most embeddings, more reverb is actually right or better. Mm, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think they can take but out one reverb. So maybe, yeah, maybe one, one caveat here is also that this is all music caps, right? Yes. So it's, I think many music caps recordings are kind of amateur, closed mic, uh, and maybe having a close <laughs> reverb. <laughs> <laughs> Masks the <Yeah>. music. <laughs> Okay. okay. To further consolidate our findings, we conducted a listening test um, to collect like fine-grained label data for musical quality, musical and acoustic quality. So we selected 300 songs, 100 from FMA Pop, and 550 uh, each from Music Caps, Music LM, Music Gen, and Mubert. This is to balance um, between generated and human composed music. For FMA Pop and Music Caps are all human composed, and the other three are all machine generated. Um, we invited seven participants, all within Microsoft Research, and ask them to rate musical and acoustic quality for each 10 second clip. And here are the prompts that um, they're given. And um, they're also given examples of high and low acoustic and musical quality songs. <coughs> here are the data set statistics. Um, after we collected the participant responses, the first thing we noticed is that each person um, rates the quality scores differently. For example, someone might have a median, um, mean score of three, whereas other people might have a mean score of four. Um, to address this issue, we calculated normalized z-scores on each rater. And also we found that acoustic quality and, and musical quality are moderately correlated which is expected because like most people are not good at separating acoustic from musical quality. Furthermore, we compare the mean quality of each data set. This shows that FMA pop is indeed better than um, music caps. This supports our usage of FMA pop as a new baseline. Um, we also use this data to validate the GPT, GPT-4 music cap labels. So as you can see, 
um, the high cluster is indeed have a high score and the low cluster indeed have a low score. And for the, for the ones without, like for the acoustic quality labels without the um, medium and low scores, uh, I mean medium and high scores, the low scores and the not mentioned scores are indeed different. <laughs> Moving on to individual FAD score results. So for both the musical and acoustic aspects, we created three clusters of songs based on, based on percentiles. So the first cluster will be less than 33 percentile. The last cluster will be higher than 66 percentile. Um, and we compared the distribution of individual FAD scores on each cluster. <coughs> so as you can see, most of the models can correctly identify the trend. So they rate um, higher quality music higher. So how can we compare between models if this is the case? <coughs> to compare between models, we measure the significance of the difference between individual FAD distribution between clusters. And we plotted them in this heat map chart. So in this heat map chart, a white color block means that the result is significant and the correlation is positive. Um, for the yel yellow color block, it means that the result is not significant. For the red color block, it means that it's not significant and also incorrect. So it will identify like the lower quality as better. Um, for the black color, we don't have anything on this graph, but it means that it's significantly incorrect. Um, on the x-axis, we have different, uh, I mean, on the y-axis, we have different embeddings. And on the x-axis, we have different splits of data sets. For example, for the first one, it is um, high versus medium quality. On the second one, we have medium versus low, low quality. And on the third one, we have low versus high quality for only the FMA subsets. And the, the other ones are for subsets as well. <laughs> so each square will be um, whether the score on this um, embedding between these two splits is significantly different. Um, for musical quality, CLAP performed the best. It scored, um, it correctly shows significance for seven out of, um, out of eight scenarios. This matches our previous results, which shows that CLAP performs well for musical quality. Um, for acoustic quality, CLAP also has the highest number of correct and significant results. <coughs> However, this isn't what we expected, because our previous um, results show that ENCODEC is actually um, most, responsive, most responsive to acoustic quality. <coughs> Instead, we found that ENCODEC only shows significance for the low versus medium split, and for other splits, it got them right, but um, there's a larger probability that the right results are due to random chance. I think future work can improve this assessment by introducing more data points, since we, we only have time to recruit seven um, raters for our data sets. And this concludes our evaluation of different embeddings. Is there anything, um, any questions before I move on to FAD Infinity? <coughs> okay. <coughs> so after all this, there's still one thing we can improve about FAD. On the image domain, one study investigated the sample size bias in FID for image classification, I mean for image, generative image evaluation. Um, <coughs> Since the generated samples are subsets of all possible generations, um, there is a bias from estimating the pop population mean covariance from this subset of generated samples. And the, the, the study found that 
The bias var variance is larger for smaller sample sizes for each feature, so the total distance will be greater for smaller sample sizes, um, which means that, um, <coughs> and, and they propose to fix this um, bias, they propose the FID infinity method, which is to estimate FID as if there are infinite samples. <coughs> Does the bias also exist in Frenchy audio distance? As you can see, it clearly does exist. Um, as we increase the sample size, the distance get increasingly lower. <coughs> so, um, another um, very crucial aspect is that many research papers publish their FAD results without mentioning the um, sample size. Notably, Music LM and Noise to Music, they did not report the sample size and they also did not provide their um, evaluation data. So um, this comparison cannot be made um, with different sample sizes. To address this, um, oh, and we can also see that um, similar to the image domain, French audio distance also changes differently with different models or different data sets. As you can see in the FID graphs, um, the, the big GAN model um, has a significantly higher slope than all the other models. And as you can see in the FAD score graph, um, our audio, audio LDM model has a slightly lower um, slope than also all the other models. So to address this, um, we use interpolation on the, num number of, um, on the inverse of the number of samples. <coughs> so, we would um, create um, 25, um, we will calculate FAD on 25 random subsets of, um, of equally distance one over n intervals. And then we would um, interpolate uh, um, a linear regression curve. So this would be this line here. Um, and we would um, calculate the score at one over n equals zero, so theoretically n equals infinity. So um, theoretically, theoretically, this will give us a score as if there's infinite samples. Um, and we found that um, the thinness of the linear regression model depends on the Gaussianness um, of each embedding. For example, for MERT, um, we have a 100% um, fit for our linear regression. However, um, and, and the, there are 90% of features that passes the Gaussian, um, Gaussian test. And for our um, lowest model, CDPAM, it only has a 20, 26% correlation, um, and, but it, um, it also has like only 15% of features passing the Gaussian test. <laughs> so this, this might influence the stabi stability of um, FAD infinity, and it might, it might only be suitable for certain models where the um, linear regression fit has like a high um, stability. <laughs> so this concludes our presentation. Um, in conclusion, we quantitatively um, evaluated various embeddings. We proposed using CLAP or MERT and ENCODEC for different quality aspects, namely the musical and acoustic quality. And we proposed using a new baseline, FMA POP, instead of the um, music caps baseline that, that is commonly used. And we proposed using FAD infinity extrapolation to reduce the bias. <coughs> So, very interesting, Corey. Go back a couple of slides. Yeah. Oh, 
<laughs> One more forward. Yeah. So technically, you propose a formula when you compute the fat distance and then you apply the formula and it's kind of unified across the data sets and embeddings. Uh, what? Sorry. So you compute the fat distance. Yes. Given data set. Yes. And knowing your OCRT, you can basically convert it to a data set and embedding independent evaluation. So you can compare across the data sets. Not embedding in, in, uh, independent, just sample size. <laughs> sample size independent. Yeah. Yes. So the, the problem that Azalea pointed out is that when you compute FAD or fresh air distance with a smaller sample size, it might inflate the numbers. So it makes the result look worse than it might be if you had more samples. So the, that's, the, mm. that's the bias. And by estimating this trend, you can actually predict the FAD scores. One under n equals zero, which means infinity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so these lines show that uh, the interpolation makes sense because the, the lines follow a linear trajectory pretty well. But on the next slide, you will see that the most probable reason for different one more is actually Gaussianity. Why not to add another parameter knowing the Gaussianity to make them comparable across the embeddings? Um, yeah, the embeddings, the embeddings measure different things. So the, okay. yeah, the Gaussianity is just a, a measure for how well um, each embedding fits the FAD requirement, which is a multi that it's a multivariate Gaussian. And there is some evidence that if the original embedding doesn't fit that very well, it might uh, cause more <laughs> variance in those. Okay, thanks. Okay. Again, no, I, I have one question. Yes. Uh, I'll put you on the spot a little bit, but let's say I'm a, I'm a researcher and I want to now generate a new generative music model. Yes. And I'm obviously looking or objective metrics, what would, given what you learned uh, during this study, what would your recommendations be? Yes. Both so for developing and evaluating the model, but also for reporting results. So for de developing the model, um, you can calculate individual FAD scores with merge and encode separately, um, or actually clap and encode separately, um, so that you can obtain um, a list of bad samples from your model, and you can listen to them to find out what's wrong with your model. And for reporting the, um, your model, um, you can, I would recommend just calculating the um, FAD on the entire data sets for MERS, uh, I mean CLAP and ENCODEC um, with FMA POP as the baseline. And you can report these two scores different, like separately, um, so that one of them represents the musical quality and the other one represents the acoustic quality. And I guess when you say FAD, you mean FAD infinity. FAD infinity, yes. You mentioned to the baseline, the uh, farm pop is uh, how it's called, sorry? FMA pop. FMA pop, it's um, how it's different from like USDB and uh, most SDB dataset. Uh, um, so FMA pop is uh, FM, so Free Music Archive is a very large um, database of um, so commons, Creative Commons music. and. Um, these are not like quality controlled, and these are just like out in the in the internet. Um, and I think that they might have a lower quality than the MuseDB and MoisesDB datasets, which are um, all studio quality and like quality controlled by researchers. Yes, yes, yes. FMA Pops co covers like a very large. Um, amounts of genres. I think there's like a, a 160 something of them. Um, whereas Musal covers only like 10 or 20 genres. So the, the business could be also based on which kind of genre you want to assess or not. Like, like for example, my model is, uh, I, want, I have a model that generates only rock and pop music. 
maybe more than some to be yeah, be yeah. better baseline than. Yeah, if you want to create a model that only generates like the most popular North American genres, then you can use um, MuSol as a baseline, and that would like be um, very good in comparison. However, I don't think it would be like nice to create a model that only generates the North American genres. So one uh, observation on the uh, listening <coughs> test results and input to that slide. So, I two, two forward. This side? Two sides forward, I think. Uh, there's yes. no two sides forward. Oh, no, backwards. Backwards. And more backwards. Yeah. Uh, so it seems like the so mover is a uh, uh, yeah. AI model. So it seems like mover performs significantly higher than also the two mm, Yes, uh, there's like, um, there's two explanations. First, Muber is not actually like generative AI. It's, it's only like an AI that composes um, pre-composed segments in, into like um, music. So, so you, you might have a drum beat, you might have like a guitar um, melody, and they combine these based on your prompt. Um, so the, the source audio is all like studio quality. They are composed by human, so it's not actually like um, AI generating audio. Yes. Um, and secondary, um, the, we are, um, the data set is created by human listeners listening to 10 second clips. And I, I think the most um, crucial um, I would say defect of Muber is that its soundtracks are all like very repetitive, which you cannot assess with 10 second clips. So, yeah. So basically, yeah, the, the listening test is not the, it's not the best way to actually give a fair comparison of these models because A, sample size is small, number of participants is small, and also the segments are short, but it did provide uh, a distribution of segments with different ratings that that can we uh, that we can then use to evaluate how well FAD can predict those scores. But for a more thorough evaluation, you would want to probably have longer segments, more participants, and also uh, prompt adherence is something that is typically included when actually compared generative models. And in our case, uh, prompt adherence is completely irrelevant. So yes. it doesn't matter what the prompt was. Yes, uh, another another issue with Muber is that it um, poorly follows the prompt. Whereas like with Music LM and Music Gen that actually generates music, um, it roughly follows the prompt. I have one more question. You just mentioned it, but didn't give details. How exactly do you use a chat GPT for labeling? Um, so um, I did this by um, giving one shot examples. So um, I asked, I, I first like in my prompt, I defined musical quality and acoustic quality. And then um, I asked a question, I give one example. I say like, um, this is the musical quality, this is the acoustic quality of this example. And then I ask the question again and put the actual um, caption that I wanted to label. So the label um, is derived from a text caption <laughs> provided by a musician. So they, they write some text. Yeah which is not, is free form. And you want ChatGPT to extract high quality, medium, low quality, good music, so-so music, bad music. Yeah. yeah. Wow, very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, the, the results seem to suggest that uh, both the listeners agree with those ratings, more or less, yeah. as you can see here, and also FAD scores predict those GPT labels pretty well. So it's a... Uh, it's an indication both that the captions are meaningful and also that the, uh, the GPT version of it and, and FAD. Cool. Yes. Last call for questions. I don't see anything online. If not, yeah, and another um, another place where we used um, GPT-4 is to 
um, refine the music cap captions into prompts that we can pass into these generative models so we can um, to, to generate the listening test data set. Yeah, so, so the music cap, cap sense, the captions are very verbose. They can be like multiple sentences. Yes. But for a prompt to a generative model, you probably want to shrink it to something oh, more. Yes, yes. Um, so, so these like 50 music halves, music LM, music gen, Milbert samples are all like, except for music half, the, the other generative samples are all generated on the same prompt, refined from music halves. Which is also how these uh, generative models are often evaluated, right? Yes, they yes, yes. When a new music generative model comes out, they say we use music caps, we generated 500 songs based on those captions, and then have people compare the music caps version with the generated one and see which one they prefer. Of course, now knowing that 40% of music caps samples are labeled as low quality, it kind of <laughs> yeah, I specifically gave like GPT-4 the instruction to remove low quality labels when like converting them to prompts. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's thank Azalea once more.